Very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, we go into our last speaker of the day, Professor Sichaba Bari Etzing. Professor Sichaba is going to talk about um, indigenous knowledge systems. Let's see if indigenous knowledge systems do have any role in our modern society. Uh, Dr. I mean, Professor uh, Sichaba is going to tell us about that. He holds a PhD in microbiology and master's um, in management in innovation studies, as well as several certificates, um, such as in advanced intellectual property management, bio, entrepreneurship, and science leadership. He is currently managing a portfolio of programs uh, within in the CSIR in the indigenous knowledge systems, uh, research, development, and commercialization that are funded through our national uh, funders such as uh, um, DSI and TIA, and also internationally uh, from United Nations Development Program. He is an affiliated associate professor at the University of Free State in microbiology and chemistry departments, and is also an extraordinary lecturer um, at, at the University of KwaZulu-Natal and he mentors a number of candidate researchers within the CSIR, and he also um, co-supervises masters and PhD uh, students uh, in South Africa. He has published a number of um, papers uh, in, in reputed journals in the fields of microbiology and um, indigenous knowledge systems. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Thank you so much, Chair. This is very daunting because my executives are here. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I'm grateful that they are here so that they can hear about the indigenous knowledge systems, IKS in short, how it can contribute to science in focusing on agriculture. Uh, I greet you all colleagues. Um, my name is Sichaba Barazeng, and I'll be talking about how indigenous knowledge systems contribute to primary agriculture, I mean primary production in agriculture. So this is a, uh, IKS is a fairly new area, it's growing within the CSIR, and it has great potential, right? Uh, particularly when we align it with other uh, fields of science and technology like um, uh, uh, my colleagues have just alluded to with regards to drones. So it, it really has a huge, huge potential to uh, improve in the science and to coming up with innovative uh, technologies. But it starts first at the community level whom have been using the system of knowledge, right, to, to survive for many, many, many years, either in the area of health, to improve their health, also in the area of food security, housing, energy. Colleagues, IKS is broad, and we are all living it. Okay, so, um, okay. Do I need to, they said I must use this. Is it moving? Ah, okay. Okay, colleagues, uh, this is the outline of my present, oh, sorry. This is the outline of my presentation. So I will first introduce you to three types of agriculture worldwide, and then IKS in agriculture, and then where um, the areas of agriculture, IKS becomes applicable, and then also highlight a few case studies in Malawi and South Africa, and then I will conclude. Uh, colleagues, there are three types of agriculture worldwide. 
The first one is industrial agriculture. Right? This one is characterized by highly capitalized infrastructure, machinery, and large-scale farming systems. This is a well-established agriculture, like commercial farming. And then you will find it in developed countries, even here in South Africa. There's also a well-established agricultural system, right? As well as smallholder farming. But at that, let's pack that for later discussion. And then we have the green evolution uh, agriculture, mostly in the developing countries. See, uh, uh, irrigation systems are well established, and then it relies on rainfall. And then the resource poor agriculture, here, this is the basis of my presentation, right? This type of agriculture you'll find in, uh, on the African continent, right? It is mainly practiced by smallholder farmers who have a, uh, pieces of land, uh, limited access to capital, limited access to market for their agricultural foods. So this is the basis of my agri uh, base, uh, uh, presentation. And this type of uh, farmers, smallholder farmers, right? They experience a lot of challenges, like you mentioned climate change, right, lack of access to capital, and then the equipment, right. However, they use their indigenous knowledge systems to navigate through all these challenges in order for them to be productive and then also to compete. So, what is IKS, colleagues? <laughs> Right. It's a very complex system, and there are different definitions like from academic literature of what IKS is. But IKS is about the knowledge of the communities, right? It stems from the communities, right, in a specific geographical area. And the communities use it to survive, right? Right, in the, four, in the areas of health and food, as I have alluded, including agriculture, right? It's a very complex system. So the communities, when they develop this system, they use visuals, they do experimentation with the environment. They do sort of things, they mix all this plant, they, how they grow it, and so forth. That is a system, and then they apply it in all the different areas for them to survive. Now, the African uh, farmers, right, who are relying on indigenous knowledge systems, right, this knowledge, they have gained it either from their forefathers, even others that even traditionally healers have gained the knowledge from their, uh, through ancestral dreams to apply it in their farming uh, 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 business to boost their agricultural uh, production uh, systems, right? And as a result, it affords them to sustain the agriculture. So there is a plenty of literature. If you can go to Google, how IKS sustain agriculture, there's a lot of that. And then even now we have students with Professor Matarechera at Northwest um, on how IKS contributes to sustainable agriculture by smallholder farmers in Limpopo, right? And now, as a result, because this system has been developed for, for many years, farmers have been using it to survive, and then they've been living it comfortably without, uh, like before this modern uh, technologies in agriculture have been introduced, right? So now, it is time now we need to really bring the two systems together, as my two colleagues have alluded to, to say, how do we interface these two knowledge systems together? Right, to come up with highly innovative technologies that will have huge impact uh, uh, on the farmers and then even on the society. So this is the areas where, uh, uh, in agriculture where IKS is relevant. So this is how IKS contributes, this slide, how IKS contributes to primary production in agriculture. So this is, this has been uplifted from the uh, book chapter by Prof. Matrechera, 
right from Northwest um, University. Like the smallholder farmers, right? For them to increase the productivity, so they will need to obviously uh, hire people within the communities whom they will train on IKS, how to uh, deal with certain crops, how to uh, determine the soil fertility and so forth. Or they can even uh, draw the resources from their family members and or even their community, right, in order to ensure that they become productive in their um, um, agricultural activities, right? Land, very important in IKS, right? Without the land, no IKS, especially for the farmers. Right? So they use the indigenous knowledge systems to how to interact with the land, which crops to, to grow there, and they are even able to determine the type of soil on that uh, piece of land. Right? And then also uh, the, 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 the cropping system. So they use this knowledge uh, to do all those kind of activities. Right? And then because most land Right, especially in the rural areas, are uh, under the traditional leadership, right? And then the, lead, the traditional leadership, in most cases, they will lease the land, but not in exchange of money, but on one condition to say, what are you going to be doing on the piece of land which you would like to acquire? In most cases, in this uh, instance, will be to grow certain crops that are of value to the community in order to sustain their communities uh, through uh, food security or even to sell within their, their um, communities. Sorry, I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to capital, money, right? Farmers have a huge challenge on accessing the loans from the banks, right? Mainly because of the capabilities that they have. Maybe they are not being believed. I, we don't know. Or maybe the lack of um, the infrastructure, right? Or maybe they don't have access to market. Like they will ask you, what is the market? And then they don't know, they don't have that information, right? So instead of accessing this capital, they use their own money, right? As crowdfunding, or they can even use the stock files. I'm sure you remember the stock files in the communities. Right, where well, community members meet and then they right? And then even the community banks. They use that to access capital to, to, um, uh, for their farming uh, business. So when it comes to skills, right, they do have skills because IKS is also about the skills. It's not only about the knowledge. It's also about the skills, right, right in the farming business. So here, the skills with regards to the land, with regards to the... The, the nutrients in the soil, so they can actually determine uh, the nutrients in the soil by merely through observation using their indigenous knowledge. I can see one of my students from Univen <laughs> is okay. Yes. So and then also uh, crop production, right? Even animal uh, um, production. They use all this uh, indigenous knowledge system in their uh, farming business. And then, so this is a case from Malawi, right? Uh, yeah, Eric is here, yeah? so I'm sure he's pleased because he's a network, my son by a network manager, deals with the Sadak region. So here in Malawi, so uh, I've uplifted this from a study by Moyo, right? And then in Malawi, uh, in the, they've done um, extensive studies, all the villages interacting with the smallholder farmers. So they determined that soil quality and fertility play important role 
in crop production, right, to achieve food security. Soil quality is very important from the Malawi uh, perspective, right? So how do they determine the soil quality and fertility, right? So they take the soil, I know you're gonna love, gonna take the soil, and they rub it against their, their fingers to determine the soil quality and then texture. So when it comes to soil fertility, right? And they look at the soil, and then if it is darker, so that is assumed as highly fatal, right? Because it's darker, right? And then when they, <laughs> please colleagues, this is very important, and it has been working for many years, <laughs> right? And then, and then when the soil is lighter, obviously then they say, no, this soil is not fertile, so they will use uh, fertilizers. Remember smallholder farmers, they are also getting a support from government. So the kind of support in most cases, they supply the smallholder farmers with fertilizers. Does it make sense? <laughs> yes. So, and these techniques which the farmers use, they are also comparable with the techniques that in the scientific community use. Right? You'll find that they will take a soil, a darker soil, and they do comparative analysis in terms of the nutrients or the chemicals. And then there will be a complete variation, particularly the darker soil, then it will be more highly nutrient based on the data that will be generated. Right? So coming home to South Africa, right, here, remember South Africa comprised of two uh, dual system of agriculture. We have the well-established agriculture, commercial farm, uh, farming, and then also the smallholder. I'm done, I'm almost done. Yes, yeah. So here, miscropping is very important. Here, what it means is you have a piece of land, right? Remember the smallholder farmers, they can, they, in most cases, they are, the size of their land varies between one hectare to five hectares. Right, of land, right? And then, so they will grow multiple crops there, right? And they know which ones they will interact in a positive manner without competing for nutrients or water yeah, in this world. So mostly the, the is a type of a crop production system in South Africa practiced by the smallholder farmers. So, so, they, so the advantage, because now they have small pieces of land, at least it addresses that issue of land. To say, okay, let's grow, grow, and then mainly is for, for the household to supply within the community, and then also on the traditional market. So in concluding, uh, colleagues, so here I, w I would like to say, based on what the smallholder farmers are adopting in terms of the IKS in their uh, primary production in agriculture, it can be interfaced with other uh, uh, knowledge systems, such as scientific knowledge, right, where we can come up with the drones, which colleagues have alluded to, right? And then also, even now, we are living in the modern times where I think most people are use smartphones, right? Then we can use smartphones with the relevant applications to determine the, the, the soil quality or soil nutrients, mainly to improve the efficiency in an agricultural system by the smallholder farmers. Because one of the disadvantages, it can take time, right? And also, there is no scientific data to substantiate that. Remember, everything is based on anecdotal evidence. There is no scientific data to substantiate that. Hence, modern scientific knowledge becomes very important to generate that data that will inform the farmer's decision to improve their uh, 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 production in agriculture. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. <laughs> Thank you.